Hello, this is Harker Bean, and today we are going to be reading about many, many backrooms entities. Some of which, after looking at the pictures, we don't need to talk about because we already know them. Some, ignore that. We don't, we either know, but I haven't really read much about them, or we might have forgotten. Either way, this is going to be a long, and I mean long, video with a lot of different entities. Starting with the windows. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. Entity number two, Habitat Architectural. Description, the windows are creatures in the shape of a window. The window has a figure inside, always pointing at the target. If the target is unaware of the creature, it will attack immediately. Windows will generally appear on level one through level two, although mainly on level one. Some windows are safe when there is no shadowy figure behind them. Some can lead to level one and a half. Or 1.5, I mean, sorry. Behaviors. The windows start by pointing in the direction of a wanderer, and a whisper is telling the wanderers is to enter the window. Once close enough, the entity will grab you and pull you in, even if the said window is closed. It is rumored that it is just an empty void on the other side, even if it shows land on the other side. Biology. These windows can come in many different shapes and sizes, and the same goes for the shadowy figures behind them. The shadowy figure always looks human and will whisper to one or to lure them into its trap. Discovery. There currently is no actual first report about the windows at the moment, but the group known as the Loss has referenced them as the men behind the glass. Do's and don'ts. Do avoid all windows at all costs. Don't. Do not trust any window. Oh, in any level if a figure is behind it. If the windows want to follow them, do not agree to do so. Moving on, we have Entity 11, the Bursters. We don't really have time to be waiting for this, so I'm going to pause the recording until it's ready. Alright. Entity number 11. Habitat Level 3. These creatures are found Level 3 and, and appear vaguely humanoid in appearance. They crawl on all fours and to move across the halls of the back rooms with their back legs further stretched out, out more similar to canine's legs structured than to ours. On the back of the bursar are many calluses that explode in, in small pops of acidic fluids when agitated or hunting prey. Behaviors. The bursars will stay mostly docile in a field-like position, but when a living creature comes near the calluses on its back, it when a living creature comes near, the cows on its back will burst, causing an exploded ocean of acidic-like substance to spread against the victim's face, usually impairing their vision. After this occurs, the person will wait for its ass to kill the victim, which it usually succeeds in doing. If the victim survives the burst, it will continue to spray acid until said victim has to come to shock, wherein the burst will consume the victim. Biology the bursters appear to be somewhat damaged by the acid they produce. When a bursar is hurt by either an excessive amount of acid within a burst or by other means, they will begin to harden their skin in a cocoon-like material. These cocoons can be broken with enough force, causing their bursar to die. The bursars are also extremely vulnerable to almond water. These ca this causes severe burns to the bursar, which they usually do not co recover from. It is assumed that the acid the bursar produces cause some sort of negative reaction when in contact with any type of water. Discovery. When bursars were first discovered, they were presumed to be in a, a subspecies of the hound. However, the classification was changed after successfully killing a bursar without causing it to cocoon itself. During which enough biological differences were found to determine it a different species than the hound. Do's and don'ts. Do cover up face, face and hands with any material when near a burster. Keep a, a supply of water when near a burster. Don't come near or contact act 
or don't come near or or, or come in contact with a burster. Don't disturb a cocoon or resting burster. And we have entity 12 here, the dunks. Description. Dunks are small boxy entities sporting a long trunk that strikingly resembles a human an arm. Dunks are well known for how easily they may be tamed. That's a really cute drawing. And how excessively compliant they are towards their owners. Dunks are naturally peaceful in temperament. However, due to their unquestioning obedience towards their owners, tamed dunks will not not hesitate to commit acts of extreme violence if commanded. Interestingly, the only exception is the fact that Dunks will always refuse to attack anyone with an elderly appearance or age. Dunks also seem to be rather adventurous and are found in a majority of well-lit levels. As a result, they boast remarkable adaptive capabilities. Behaviors When Dunks, while well, out Dunks are quite adventurous, they are known to wander are large distances, rarely settling in, in any one an area, though they tend to stay within the bounds of a single level. It is unheard of for them to wander across multiple levels, leaving clones behind them as they go. While dunks are passive in disposition and will neither attack nor help others, they seem indifferent towards other entities and pay no mind to anything which does not directly bother or endanger them. Dunks were previously believed to be completely emotionless, but closer examination has revealed that they do experience basic emotions, like most animal life forms. However, dunks rarely express what they are feeling. Displays of emotions have only been observed in wild dunks when they interact with other dunks or in solitude. <coughs> Excuse me. Tame dunks never display emotion of any kind, apart from a sense of loyalty, of loyalty to their owner. Research has shown, has shown that wild dunks seem to try to avoid being tamed, avoiding human contact, and try to run away from anyone who, who approaches them. It's speculated that dunks would rather live free and undisturbed, and when tamed, may be forced to obey every order against their will. Of course, dunks only behave in this manner er, er, until they are tamed. Dunks can be tamed by wanderers as well as entities, seeming by tap. Epping the end of their hand-shaped trunk, they may be brought to a state of trust and total acquiescence. Almost immediately, they will begin to physically follow their new owner and will answer to commands no around their language or if words are even spoken. They seem to have an amazing ability to understand orders without needing their owner or to even speak. Because of this, it is speculated that they have telepathic powers. Despite their subservience, however, dunks do have basic common sense. And will usually ignore any commands that, that they are physically incapable of completing, or which are generally absurd. Others who have accidentally tamed dunks will have no way to disown them at, other than by terminating the entity or by dying themselves. If dunks owners are injured somewhere that their dunk cannot, their dunk will repeatedly hit their head against the object obstructing its path. Sadly, this usually leads to the death of the dunk. Poor thing. Owners who wish to temporarily leave their dunk may overcome this difficulty by placing them in a padded enclosure or commanding their dunk to stay in an area. Dunks will defend their owners at all costs, even to the point of giving up their lives, unless told otherwise. They can be used to attack others and seem to show no hesitation, fear, or reluctance, even when told to commit acts of extreme violence. Smarter entities have been an observed aiming dunks to use them to attack wanderers, though no, this is a rare sight. When sent to attack an organism, dunks will normally use their trunk to grab their victims, pulling themselves toward or to a target. They will then slam themselves against the target, painfully goring them with their sharp horns. While this may seem intimidating, dunks are physically rather weak compared to other entities. They are easy to evade as they are not particularly strong or fast, and we outpace with little difficulty. However, their body can be quite heavy, so you you are advised not to let dunks put their weight onto you. If you fall over and a dunk sits on top of you, it may crush you or leave you immobilized and vulnerable on the floor. The only order dunks have been known to reject is the order to harm anyone with an elderly appearance. Some examples of this are old man facelings or one or two look 50 years old or above. 
It is believed that this behavioral quirk has to do with the way dunks were first domesticated. Within a new environment, wild dunks will start a process where they, they intentionally clone themselves with their clone take on an aspect to, to the surrounding area. This acts as a sort of sped up evolutionary process, where dunks can adapt to fit into their environment. More information on this for us is can be, may be found under biology. After cloning itself, the virtual dunk will carry on like usual. They will invariably abandon the clone, wandering on to find a more suitable level for themselves. The clone usually stays within the level they are built for. Jeez. Biology. Dunks are small entities with the appearance of a miniature or box elephants, having an average height of 2.5 feet or 76 centimeters and a width of 2.4 feet or 73 centimeters and a length of 3.5 feet or 106 centimeters. They're exceptionally heavy with a weight of 80 kilograms or 176 pounds. Why'd you switch from um, imperial to metric? Like, choose one to have in parentheses and one not to, please. If a dunk collapses on you, it will be pretty difficult to pull them off. They have small round legs that provide them minimal mobility. On average, they walk 2 miles per hour, or 3 kilometers per hour. And run at top speed eats of 5 miles per hour, 8 kilometers per hour. They have a long trunk in, in a shape resembling human, a human hand. This trunk is not as advanced as human as a human hand, it's similar to an elephant's trunk in behavior and, and anatomy. Too cute. Okay. Two sharp horns also grow from the top of their heads. These horns are made of keratin and grow over time. They have attained their unique shape through a strange growing pattern that makes them twist and cross over each other. Wild dunks are known to rub their horns against rough surfaces to shave them down from time to time. Owners of tame aim dunks are advised to shave down their horns occasionally to prevent them from getting too long for the dunk to manage. Interestingly, because of passivity, people have been able to scrutinize the overall anatomy of dunks. This has revealed numerous oddities in their physiology. For example, dunks do not have mouths or even a digestive system. Instead, they seem to absorb light in their skin, undergoing photosynthesis like plants to obtain energy. Similarly, though dunks possess a, a, a skeletal system similar in most aspects to that of, a nor uh, of normal animals, they have a hexagonal pattern shaping their bones. Which mechanically strengthens their structure, their signature cube of shaped skeleton. Dunks also have uh, mostly functional muscles. A dunk's most recognizable appendage is, of course, its long arm shape of trunk. Their trunk can be used to feel and pick up items. The inner of the trunk appears to contain specialized sensory nerves which react to being tapped and are responsible for producing the biological mechanisms which change a dunk's behavior when it is tamed. Cloning As a species, dunks have also been proven to be very adaptable in new environments. They are known to reproduce by cloning themselves, producing forms suited to their surroundings. To clone itself, a dunk will use a sharp object to tear off a tiny piece of their skin or chip off a piece of their horn. If possible, or, or they will then hide the piece of skin or horn in a safe, secluded area within the level. After several minutes, the biological tissue will reform into a replica of the original dunk with specific evolutionary adaptations suited to the region. This clone is an entirely distinct organism from the original dunk, with a different appearance and personality. Variants. Variants are the results of, dunk, of the dunk cloning process. Variants usually have a different color, different personality, and, adapta and adaptations to suit the environment they were created. These clones were clo 
can clone themselves as many times as they want, producing variants with increasingly effective of nature adaptations. While most dunks are adventurous, variants with significant adaptational changes, generally speaking, variants resulting from a second or above cloning cycle away from a basic dunk, seem to mostly stay in their own environment and will not purposefully move across different levels. In addition, dunks seem to avoid darker environments because their energy is taken from light. However, some variants have been able to survive in darker levels, usually by absorbing far red light or artificial light. Each variant is sameable and will behave like any average dunk in one in most situations. Some variants include, but are not limited to, snow dunks. With the first stage, this dunk has a wider light blue hue and has a resistance to cold temperatures. These clones sometimes have an underside resembling an ice like color. This variation is found only on levels with ice lakes. Second stage clone. This clone has a layer of white and a white fur and occasionally loose pieces of skin resembling grass. These clones may water a bit, but generally like to stay at their level. Third stage clone. This clone has amazing resistance to the cold and is practically built for the environment. It will not try to leave its home level. It will try not to leave its home level. Field dunk. First stage clone. This clone has a green hue and is a bit. It, Quicker than the usual dunk, they move at a constant speed of 5 miles per hour or 8 kilometers per hour. Second stage clone, this dunk has loose piece of skin resembling grass. These clones may wander a bit, but generally like to stay at their level. Third stage clone, this clone absorbs much more energy than the usual dunk can, and can reach speeds up to 15 miles per hour or, or 40 kilometers per hour. This ability makes them desired by many wanderers. I can see that. Stone Dunks. This clone has a dark hue and has learned to absorb our far red light. This variation will also gain small bumps on their skin resembling pebbles, but generally this variant is the least is the most simple of the ones listed here. Second Sage Clone. This clone has thicker skin and, and to resemble a rock. They move slowly at 1.5 miles per hour to conserve energy in darker environments. This variant may also gain resistance to high temperatures, but this depends on the level. Third Sage Clone. This clone has a strong build but moves at a very slow speed of 1 mile per hour, they are, or 1.6 kilometers per hour. They are quite solitary and will actually avoid being tamed by purposely hiding their trunk and will behave like any other dunk once tamed. Here are some extra variants like the Playhouse Dunks, a dunk that is Adapted to stay in childish levels, these dunks are resilient to loud noise, but are not very interesting other than their nice hues. Beach dunks, these dunks are adapted to beach-like levels, they are resilient to sun and light and are great diggers. They are noticeable for the a single palm tree poking out of their back. These are really cute. Arcade dunks, dunks are adaptable to arcade themed levels. Arcade dunks have a more playful personality and are slightly faster than their basic counterparts. These clones are known to display more emotion than any other dunk, though this is still a rare sight. Discovery Dunks have been found throughout the backgrounds for quite a while. It is difficult to identify when exactly they were discovered, but photos and sketches of them have been commonly found in Wanderer's journals. There are many carvings displaying them. Have, some have featured unusual traits that the common dunks do not, does not have. The majority of these drawings portray dunks with mouths, rings, shapes around their trunk, and even with tails. It's unknown why these drawings contain these characteristics, but it is speculated that it has to do with their domestication. The reason and an dunk is domesticated is tied to the story of an elderly wanderer. Rumors would suggest that this wanderer is specifically trained in dunks to follow orders. These dunks would have cloned themselves with adaptations that made them more obedient and caused less trouble for their owners. Such adaptations would include photosynthesis or detain aiming their herbs at the end of their trunks. This would explain why dunks are so easily tamed, as its attitude would have been embedded in their species ever since they were first domesticated. It would also explain why dunks refuse to attack anyone with an elderly appearance, as they would ex instinctively remind them of their original domesticator. But there is no concrete proof for this, it has become the most popular theory on how dunks develop their subservient nature. 
do's and don'ts. Do so leave her trial dunks to avoid startling them. Allow time dunks time to comply with your orders. Keep in mind that dunks can be very slow and be patient with them. Be consistent. Dunks follow specific order to completion, so they may be confused if you give if conflicting instructions. Stay in well lit areas to feed your dunk with energy as you travel. Dunks can function in dark areas, but be sure to take them out for a break if they get tired. Don't allow dunks to put their weight on you. This may lead you to mobilize and susceptible to attacks from different entities. Make lots of noise. Dunks may be alarmed and hide their trunks so as not to be tamed. Enter an area you dunked not. This may lead to the death of your dunk. Leave your dunk unsupervised in the open. Dunks are vulnerable and are and very easily killed, so make sure to take good care of them. Take care of your little old elephant friends. Now we're gonna read about oh, Entity 13. Entity 13, I forgot what. Oh, yeah, these were called transporters. Oh, this is like multiple versions. That's interesting. Oh, wow. Okay. Entity designation 13 Habitat Indoor Levels and Interiors of Buildings. We're starting with the first one, then the experiences, then we're going to go to the NC revision. And we still have four more after this. Description. NG-13, also known as transporters and grabbers, are floating silhouetted humanoids, known for snatching and teleporting waters and other entities seemingly at random. Behaviors. These entities float in random spots, staring at random spots of the environment. If one retracts the attention of a transporter, it will turn... Ooh, footnotes. That's always fun. Through making loud noises, speaking an air shot, running, etc. It will turn to stare, er, and we get to hover towards them. Quickly gaining speed until it reaches the wanderer. The transporter will then lift the wanderer by, up by their hands and note no clip seamlessly into the nearest wall. One of, the two, one of two things things will happen afterward. Either a swift death, the cause of death is unknown, it is suspected there are no clips may be fatal to non NC 13 life. Or the person will be dragged to the void and land in seemingly random levels with varying safety. It's not recommended to attempt contact with a transporter due to their possibly fatal no clips, unless in mortal danger. Biology. Transporters are humanoid entities with completely light absorbing skin, making them completely pitch black, even in brightly lit environments. Let's get that out of the way. The only exception is a singular eye, which are humanoid and have similarly pitch black a, a, and have a similarly pitch black pupil, like the rest of our body. They lack legs or a pelvis and constantly float one and a half meters above the ground. Their pitch for lack of body makes asserting more de details of their biology difficult. All transporters wear are long black coats or and cork pie hats with large wide brims. Their coats often drag across the floor, leading to some tears, fraying, and grime around the bottom edges. Discovery. Entity 13 was discovered by an unaligned wanderer when they a watched a person being taken by a transporter in level 131. As for writing this document, this encounter and other experience of a mech operative are the only fully recorded encounter with transporters, with other accounts only being hearsay and rumors. Do's and don'ts. Do slowly eat in quietly back away from them until out of earshot before running. Stay quiet and avoid talking. Don't talk or scream in earshot of the entity. Don't run from the entity. Don't shine a light on the entity as if if in a dark area. Okay. Now let's read the wanderer experiences. Hmm. 
Note from Archivist Whiskey. It's a scrawling tape. No wonder if it'll actually be useful for employing purposes, but orders are orders. You know it's a gamble with this guy. I'll cut for shortness, so you're welcome. So that's how I figured out that damn Barista was stealing those tips. Cheeky bastard. But I can understand the grind. Anyways, it looks like I'm stuck back in these tunnels. You know, there's so many of these same places. I really can't keep track. I mean, like, it's not like the underworld was infinitely more expensive if then any one person could know, right? That the chance is of getting out our... <sighs> Alright, that's enough of that. It's gotta be in these tunnels. Maybe they're messing with my head. Keep it in the game, you old fart. It's gotta keep going in. Wait, there's some guy here. Real shady guy. Neighborhood watch sign looking. And fella. Don't know if you've flown them beasts. Let me just... The sound of cautious footsteps. As scrolling in your approaches. Wait a minute. Where are your legs? Oh fuck! Scrolling bleeps expl uh, expletives. I said Jerry, you can tell how the sound oh, oh, of no clipping is heard. About four minutes, scrolling screams and wind noise is picked up by the recorder. It abruptly stops with the thud of a cassette edge recorder and scrolling himself. For about four minutes, scrolling is oh, scrolling reading can be heard unless the ambiance and cause of parrot it like entities is heard. New level oh, is resumed to be level seven twelve. Scrolling in between breaths, what the hell was that? That thing just grabbed me and threw me out here. Well, at least I'm outside now. Or I guess whatever's close enough to it. Tape segment ends here. We have a second experience. Wait, hang on. Nothing there. Okay. Number two. Interviewer. Mega Operative, Amos Russ Jackson. Interviewee, anom anom Anonymous 11, Level 11 Denison. You know how weird it is that landlords exist on Level 11? I mean, there is literally infinite living space, and people still think, oh, I'm gonna be scummy and be a land parasite in the literal hellscape. Or even whole hoarding that counts as wealth, huh? Almond water? Bitch, there are levels solely composed of that shit. And speaking of almond water, why does it heal people? It's almond! That naughty fucker ain't doing shit to me besides giving me rashes at work. Yeah, it's a fucking tut. And all in gold standard of this <sighs> Can we please get on back on topic? The NC encounter? Well, clearly you haven't been listening to my vital sub-metaphors. Is that even a real word? But if you need me to spell it out up with you, then fine. Mm-hmm. There's this level. I call it the Disco Car Park. I don't know what your group calls it. You're not finicky level 11 and it. Step on a gutter and you end up in a gross sewer and collapse in a car park. Vile. Absolutely no continuity or theme. They're just throwing levels at each other. Who or whatever. Or they would be. Anyways, I'm looking for a way out, and there's these guys. You know those shitty PSAs from the 80s? Imagine them trench coated shadows. Give them fuck off wide rimmed hats and throw them in a car lot. There you go. Floating, too. Things and see their legs. The usual bullshit. And there's a law of them. All circled together like you're summoning Satan together. Making these, uh, gang signs, the ritual hand gestures at each other. Looking back, it wouldn't surprise me if they were satanic or, 
or some shit like that. You know how it is here. Gang signs and satanic, they might just be using sign language, but okay. Gang signs. I don't fucking know, man, but you know oh, what you do when you see that shit? You fucking run! Come hell or high water! So that's exactly what I did. That alerted the horde, though, so one of them started flowing towards me. You should have the rest if you're asking me. Yeah, let's say that. Bring me right back, back into my shitty apartment at 11. But we're going low in rent this month. Do you have any spare almond water on you? Just go to a different apartment, honestly. There's infinite space and... And, and you are still oh, oh, paying, paying, paying someone rent. When you could just go somewhere else. Alright, water experience number three. No form offer it's a poppy. This conversation was originally recorded in ASL. And that's when and transcribed into written word by myself. Interviewer, MEG operative Leia Poppy Jackson. Interviewee, anonymous level 11 Denison. So how exactly did you encounter Entity 13? I was in an empty skyscraper in level 11. I was looking for a place to set up a base. I saw a grabber looking out the a window, but didn't know oh, they were an entity. Glass floor, didn't and want to look down. Nerves, you know. The sun was right in front of it, so I assumed it was naturally straddled. I must have made a noise because it turned around suddenly. It wasn't the sun. I decided to sign a greeting. Figured it was best to be polite before I died. It got visibly excited and began rapidly signing. It was a bit hard to see with all the shadow, but we managed. Fascinating. What was it like? It had a broken way of signing. It used both American Second World Language and the British Second Language. Knew it. And a strange hybrid at a boat. I only know ASL, so it was difficult to follow. But I got the general message. And that message was People Carry Service. They'd take up the offer, figured I was safest here in level in eleven. It seemed disappointed, slouched shoulder orders and such, turned back around and continued to stare at the window. I left soon after. Is this what you wanted to know? Yes, it was. Thank you. Post note. This is huge. We ought to make an entire early new page for this. Agreed. The old revision has needed reformatting for a while, especially with this new information. I'd be happy to work on such problems. Object when need arises. And last but certainly not least, the new revision. Entity the Destination 13. Habitat, indoor levels, and interiors areas of buildings. Description Entity 13, also known as transporters and grabbers, are floating silhouetted humanoids. Known for ferrying waters and entities across the back rooms. Behaviors. These entities float in random spots, staring at random spots of the environment. Their attention can be drawn towards a wanderer via visual or, or auditory contact. Once contacted, they would earn, earn to stare and will attempt communication via sign language, or by directing any attention towards a, a sign reading taxi service is in a variety of languages. Ooh, this is a really nice sketch. Look at that. Sketch of a transporter. I tried taking a photo instead, but it seems to be very camera shy. I'll read it with Poppy. That's fair. Expressing agreement and being not uttering with thumbs up will cause the transporter to grab the wanderer with their hands and swiftly no clip 
into the Earth's wall. Transformers seem to travel all through an as of yet unknown un unlevel and accessible by the entity itself. After a variable amount of time, 3 to 5 minutes, Transformers will drop off, off the Wanderer into a level of their choosing, express before agreeing to the Transformers service. If they do not make these, these prior agreements, the enemy will bring them to RAM level with a survival difficulty class of 3 or below. Biology Transformers are humanoid entities. With completely light absorbing skin, making them completely a pitch black even in brightly lit environments. The only exception is a singular eye, which are humanoid and have similarly black pupils like the rest of their body. They lack legs or pelvis and constantly float one and a half meters above the ground. Their arms, in contrast, are extremely long at three meters and with four joints and long multi jointed fingers with at least seven segments. The transformers seem to have the Unique ability to voluntarily grow more arm and finger segments at will. This ability is poorly understood. All transporters wear black coats and black port or pie hats with large white brims. These hats have a yellow oval and black checkered band wrapped around its center. Their coats often drag across the floor, leading to some um, tears and fraying and grinding around bottom edges. Discovery Entity E13 was discovered by an unaligned wanderer when they watched the person being taken by transfer in level 131. As of writing in this document, at least 20 wanderer experiences with transfers have removed their honesty and safety as a means of travel across the back rooms. Interview Log Note, we talked in the combined sign these entities use. I have since transcribed the, the conversation into written word. Interviewer, Dr. O'Brien. Er Interviewee, a transporter. We still have a few questions. Is it alright if I ask? Yes, will, can. Yes, yes, will. Alright, first question. Why did it take so long to establish content? Act. Thought, understood, signal, given, yes, noise, good, welcome, move, move. Old, understand, uh, given, direction, thought, hello, wave, grab, move, move. And what about your level? What is it, and why is it so dark? Maze, water, dark, dark. Marble, void, sky. Home, friend, safe, not us, only safe. Dark, dark, cannot pay too big infinite bill, infinite cost. Price, dark, safe. And the taxi e service sign? Why did you start carrying them around? Yes, see, hello, yes, taxi. Hi, move, ideal, move, move. Happy friends, understand. Hmm. That's enlightening. Dang, I really chose some long ones, didn't I? Oh, right. Okay, just a few more. Reviux. Entity number 14. Have debts. Level 5. Level 7. Level 170. Others. Reviux are entities that can be found in the back rooms, most commonly on level 5 and 7. Characterized by their many legs and ability to burrow into the ground, these creatures should be considered extremely dangerous. Behaviors. Reverie Oaks will burrow into the ground for several weeks at a time, waiting for wanderers or other entities to walk over them. The ground will eventually heal and look like it did before. After around 5 to 9 seconds of standing on the ground, the ground will begin to break. 
The reverie, the reverie uh, will break out the floor and grab its, break out the floor and grab its victim, putting it, it back underneath the floor. What happens at this point is unknown, but the victim may reemerge as a bare, brittle skeleton. It is assumed that Revue, that the Revue forces its victims to suffocate underground and discards the remains. Biology The exact physical appearance of a Revue is unclear as they spend most of their existence underground. However, we do know what they generally look like. Large muscular arms in the front of the body and three small legs in the back. The feet have a spork-like appearance, allowing them to dig into the ground in seconds. The head has several black beady eyes and a small tube-like mouth underneath. Males will have large white spots in the body, while our females will have several tiny white dots. Discovery. A man named Andrew Williams, a member of the originals, vanished from level 5 for seemingly no reason. Eventually, the culprit of Ravioke was discovered and promptly killed by Captain Edward Smith. Do's and don'ts. Do listen for vibrating sounds on the ground. Keep a weapon on hand. They can be killed. Don't walk on flooring that vibrates or rumbles. I'm not even sure if I'm going to be able to pronounce this one. I was going to call it Zer. A Zer is a large spike. Entity number 16. Habitats. Level 1, Level 2, and Level 3. Description. A Zer, as I'm going to call it from up here on, is a large spire like creature that possesses 16 appendages. While a close encounter with it is highly dangerous, not only are they slow, but they are also aren't observed to chase prey. As long as you steer clear of its traps, they are essentially harmless. Behaviors. They generally stay hidden on ceilings, creating in ball-shaped webs and filing, and filling them with a sedative that, uh, while unable to completely paralyze a victim, is enough to greatly dampen a person's thinking capability. It then hangs its balls on the ceiling with additional webbing. It continues to do so, oh, and there is no prey. A nearby. On smaller prey, i.e. other bugs, it simply spurs the chemical then starts to eat prey. On humans, however, it stays completely still to not be noticed. When water is directly below its traps, it proceeds to cut down a single ball. The ball then bursts out, out the sedative onto the target. Most targets will not notice the first one, but will start to feel weird. The effects of the depressant start and the victim will start to feel less aware of their surroundings. It then and proceeds to drop up all the balls at once, eventually making the target completely unresponsive to any outside its stimuli. The Zerd then drops down to its prey and proceeds to eat it alive. After feeding, it returns to the nearest possible ceiling and hibernates before setting up its traps once again. Absolutely terrifying. Biology. Zerd is currently classified as an arachnid under the Solifu Ugai order. An order or in a class of arachnid. I don't know as camel spiders, wind scorpion, and sun spiders, or simply as a solid oogs. Sizes vary greatly, but the average size of a zur is estimated to be around 4 inches wide and 7 inches in length. So they are eating you for a long time as a human. Discovery. It is believed that when red user you Lord Mac 29 was first to discover NC 16 after a short message containing a considerable amount of spelling grammatical errors was sent to the Meg members. As the message was incomprehensible aside from the words spider and 16 legs, no investigation was made, as it was thought at the time that Lord Mac 29 was under the effects of some uh, creational substance. 
The first recorded sighting of NC-16 was from a team of, of mega explorers on a mission unrelated to the said entity. They have set up a, a base directly underneath the family of Zerus, and by the time they realized what was going on, two members ha have already been fatally injured and were unable to recover. A team immediately went back to a safe base and recorded the inc incident and entity. The first version of this is entry was created by a mech explorer that was unknown to them, it was still under the heavy sedation effect of the ENT-16 secretion. The name for ENT-16 was supposed to either be the Sleeper or the Sleeper Spider, but the name Zer was typed instead. The name stayed in this way as a of how powerful the sedation effect could get. Research. While the entity itself is dangerous to, due to its size, its secretion is found to be very harmless, even in large doses. Research is currently ongoing to create highly effective painkillers, antidepressants, and other beneficial drugs that people within the back rooms are in desperate need of. Do's and don'ts. Do look for ball shaped web sacks on the ceiling. Avoid ceilings with web sacks. Pay attention to any signs of discomfort. Shake your body now and again to counter a possible Zer attack. If attacked, seek help from a nearby outpost immediately. Don't stay in a single spot for or long if there are ceilings above your head. Ignore minor discomfort. Give up hope. Injuries from a Zer are usually treatable. If you can still notice them, it's a good sign that you could still be saved. Wow, another one that sounds like a spider. I think it might be a spider. <laughs> Z17 crawlers. Entity number 17. Habitat majority. Description. Crawlers are the collective name for all those affected by certain somewhat anomalous species of fungus. This fungus's growth is extremely aggressive and the infection is present in abundance on many levels. Therefore, this makes crawlers an extremely active threat in the back rooms. The crawler fungus can only spread to humans through liquid and thrives in warm, dark, and damp places. It can spread only spread by contact to small animals or insects that are affected by it. Once these animals or insects reach state H4 of, a, of the infection, they will begin to an extreme. They will become extremely aggressive and will attempt to spread the fungus through any means necessary. You may be bitten by an infected individual, which means that the fungus has already spread to you. There is no, no cure for the, to the crawler infection. Crawler and fungus can be characterized by the bright white buildup on a on an animal's body. This fungus is a visually similar to the Torubiella fungus, a strain of, of Cordyceps fungus, which is as and infects several spiders. It will attempt to engulf the entire body of the animal in the substance, slowly consuming its energy and nutrients for growing uh, for growth purposes for growth purposes. Spores are released in liquid substances such as blood, saliva, urine, or sweat, and as such is recommended to patch your wounds to avoid infection. Infection. Crawler infected animals do not progress past stage 4. However, these are extremely aggressive towards humans and will actively try to infect as many humans as possible through liquid exposure. Once humans are are infected, they will progress from stage 1 to stage 5 at around 12 minutes following initial infection. This time period is extraordinarily short for complete infection, therefore it is recommended to quarantine all infected and immediately to reduce spread of the crawler infection. Let's see these stages. Stage 1, average duration is 3 minutes. Description. Initial infection. Victims will be rather itchy during this stage. From this stage forward, infected are considered as already crawlers and effectively lost. 
If symptoms are noticed, it is best to quarantine the victims immediately. Stage 2. I usually last about a minute. Small fluffy white spots will begin to appear on the victim's skin, and so elevation and levels will increase rapidly. Extreme hunger has, been, has also been and reported. Stage 3. 30 seconds. Spontaneously, the victim will be engulfed in, in crawler fungus. The entire body will be covered in this material. The victim's blood will also begin to increase in temperature at a rapid rate, far past the normal blood temperature. Victims will often have a severe fever from this stage onwards. Stage 4 usually lasts 7 and a half minutes. During this phase, that it is more than half the length of, of progression, victims will begin, will, will begin being extremely aggressive to all forms of life, actively attempting to spread the crawler infection. The fungus will begin spreading internally and within the brain, taking control of their brain stem. Their eyes will become bloodshot and their blood will begin boiling at a temperature of around 150 Celsius. This is far beyond the human and usual all resistance to high temperature. However, the victim's body will still function due to the crawler fungus resistance. Carotene production will rapidly increase, causing the hair and nails to grow at an extremely fast rate, and the infected individual will attempt to use her nails as a weapon to spread the infection. Stage 5 This one doesn't end. The infected will sever the bottom half of their bodies at the waist level and use the sharp nails to tear away at their flesh. The infected will begin using their arms to crawl as a means of transport. They will receive a sensory increase, having high levels of sight and hearing capabilities, and all fungus on the exterior of their bodies will spontaneously combust, trying to remove a few layers of skin. The fungus within their brain will have full control of their body functions, and will self-regulate their bodies to maintain a suitable host. Behaviors Crawlers will have various behaviors ranging from normal behavior to aggressive based on their stage of infection. Biology Not much is known about the biological Structure of the crawler fungus, however, they are assumed to be able to increase and decrease temperature around their at will. Similarity is between this infection and the front rooms in its cordyceps have been drawn, however, it has not been scientifically proven that this is a number of cordyceps in us or a unique species is endemic to the back rooms. I mean, in real life, humans don't turn into zombies, so. I'd have to say it's probably unique to the backrooms. Discovery. Crawlers were discovered in 2009 when the Me eggs based alpha was raided by I several stage 5 crawlers. The infected individuals were immediately killed by gunpower, gunfire. However, some individuals were infected later, and a crawler pandemic has been running rampant throughout the backrooms since. It's thought that crawlers were not present on the levels before. However, infection has caused it to spread to the majority of the levels in the backrooms. Do's and don'ts. Do. Quarantine suspected infected immediately. Terminate infected at a far range with gunfire. Be wary of suspicious animals and people. Don't touch any infected. Don't trust wild entities or animals. Kill infected at melee range. Give in to urges if you're infected. Attempt to find a cure. There is no known cure. And last but certainly not least. Is NT18. Alright. The Beast of Level 5. I don't remember if we actually read this before or not. NT18. NT number 18. Habitat. Right where I need to be. Description. That's what strikes out. Ah, you're here. I was expecting you. I hope I didn't startle you too badly. I would just like to have a little talk between the two of us. On business terms, of course. I know you've had a few questions for me and you've tri um, you tried to answer yourself. Though I'm nothing, I'm sure nothing beats talking to the real deal. No need for names. Don't worry. I know very well who you are. What is it you call me again? The beast of level 5? Goodness. Talk about a way to treat your business partner. 
Why not the gentleman of level 5? Ah well, I guess it's pointless as well on that. If it works for you, then I suppose it works for me. This is my hotel. My domain, if you will. Nice, isn't it? I hope it doesn't give you m too much trouble. Having run a place like this for so long, I try my best to keep it in its best shape. You're scared, aren't you? That's all right. I can't imagine what might have gone, what you might have gone through to get here. How about this? I can help you. Let's strike a deal. Oh, you and I. It'll be our little secret. You just have to do a few things for me. Nothing too difficult, and I promise you'll never have to feel that fear again. I promise. Do's and don'ts. Do. Don't be afraid to shake my hand now. A deal is a deal, right? There's no need to be so worried. I'm a man of my... I word. Don't. Why are you doubting me? Oh. Hmm? What's all this about? I thought I made it clear not to doubt me. Entity number 18. Habitat. Level 5. Don't go in there. Don't even think of going in there. Description. Entity 18 isn't to be fucking trusted. I don't care how nice he makes himself sound, or, or, or how much he assures you can trust him. He's going to watch you until he can see you break. Don't trust the portraits or the patterns in the walls. They're all lies. They're all fucking lies. No matter how short your say is in there, he can see everything. He can smell your fear, and he'll use that to his advantage. It's too, too fucking late for me. I can't fix this. I'm not finishing in my end of this dumb deal. I don't care anymore. I'm done. I don't even know why I'm writing this. Maybe it's some desperate final plea. Either you don't even believe me. I guess I'll, I'll, guess I'll just have to show them. Behaviors. He only makes himself see into those he wants to be seen by. If you spot that thing out of the corner of your eye, it's already too fucking late. You don't discover him. He discovers you. Do's and don'ts. Do. Just get out of there. Get out of there. Don't listen to him. Don't listen to his voice. Don't look at the portraits on the walls. And that was uh, a collection of uh, entities from all across the back rooms. I plan on doing some more stuff like this because there's a lot of entities that we haven't covered. Just like the levels. But I think entities can do can be more group stuff. If you like this video, please like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, Goodbye!